And this is going to hurt some of you guys. And I know that there are exceptions to the rules. So please shut up, okay? Long distance will not be convenient. Do you guys have an end in sight or are you both stringing each other along? Welcome or welcome back to the e Rotic channel. Hi, my name is Eden Lee Middleman. I am your favorite dating and sex coach. I tell it like it is. I am not for the weak hearted. And I'm going to really dive deep into a topic that you guys have been bombarding me with to get my opinion and advice on. And that is long distance. Okay. Long distance is a dynamic where you two are now forced to deal with the biggest obstacle being distance, not being easy to see each other, possibly flying out different continents, provinces, countries, states, whatever it might be. Some people don't classify, you know, different towns a few hours away as being long distance. But for the vast majority of people who have never done it would look at that as a long distance relationship. So I'm going to go over kind of my opinion, my advice on everything. But first, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about me and my experience with long distance relationships, because you guys know I am not the one to talk out of my ass. I won't talk unless I have some sort of experience on it, enough research, and I feel comfortable talking about it. If I don't, I will not. And so this video and this episode is here and is existing because I do have long distance experience. And I say that and my heart kind of hurts and I have like a knot in my stomach because it was one hell of a fucking ride. And it's not something I want to flat out say I recommend for majority of people. I met this guy on a dating app. We started dating. He was a, a town over basically about an hour away from me and we saw each other one to two times a week. His job and career required him to travel, you know, a few weekends here and there. I was okay with that. I was busy doing my own thing. I think it's very important to allow, you know, your partner or your future partner to have the independence to pursue any sort of career or things that give them joy, passions, all of that stuff. And I've mentioned that in other videos too. So I was never kind of upset about the traveling. I go into relationships with the mentality of I give you all of my trust until you give me a reason not to. People like to argue with me and say, nope, you should have them earn your trust. I think that's a very unhealthy, unbalanced relationship. It's not fair to bring up your past and project that onto your future partner or your current partner. I believe that the only way to really give a relationship a chance is to just go full throttle. I'm trusting you. And then if I feel uncomfortable, we'll discuss. If things don't work out, then they don't work out. That is just the name of the game. Fast forward three to four months into the relationship and he had to move back to his hometown, which is about five hours away from me. Car ride. And for most people, they'll be like, oh, that's not too bad. Like it is what it is. You'll make it work. But because both of our lifestyles and careers are hectic and require us to physically be there, it did pose a big obstacle that we both now had to face. I always grew up being like, I am not the long distance type of person. What I mean by that is I always felt like my trust would be tested to the point where I wouldn't be able to handle it. I've always been the person that needs someone there physically, especially if I'm going through things. I want my partner to just be there physically. My love language is quality time. Unfortunately for me, quality time means one-on-one -on -one physically and long distance would always get in the way of that. So I grew up thinking long distance was like a no-go for me. Never ever could I, nor do I want to. That's why I never entertained anything online. That's why I never, you know, changed my fucking locations on Hinge to Italy, although the guys are fucking stunning. I knew I'd fall in love and I didn't want to put myself in that predicament. So a little tip here, I'm going to pause as I go on with my story is don't put yourself in that position. And I know there's only so much we can do, but don't put yourself in that position. A lot of you guys get desperate. You end up trying to find people that you know are not really within your area, um, you know, and you're not willing to move necessarily. And like, you know, all these things about you. And then you put yourself in a very difficult position almost to set yourself up for failure. So just keep in mind while you're dating what is negotiable for you, what is something you're open to genuinely and what is something you're not you know, don't go in thinking if it's the man of my dreams, I will do whatever you are putting away your boundaries, throwing them in the garbage and then becoming just the relationship and non independent person in the relationship, which, like I've said in all of my fucking videos, creates unhealthy attachments and codependency. And that is very difficult to get out of. And that relationship will never actually be healthy for you, regardless of how amazing that person is. When you are compromising parts of yourself and independence as a person, the relationship will fail. Now, I didn't put myself in that position and sometimes life works that way and there's only so much we can control. And the only thing I could control in that moment was what did I, Eden Lee Middleman, genuinely want to do? At that point, I had 
evident feelings for this man and things were going great and I did see a future with him. He wanted to give it a shot and he called me up and explained the situation, said this is the circumstance and, you know, I want to do this and I want to give this a try. And I, I know you, you long distance is like a no go for you. Long distance was never a thing for me because his life was always pretty much him dating people all around because he was traveling a lot he had a genuine taste of long distance and understood what that entailed I didn't I just made the assumption that I couldn't do it because of that I was like okay don't knock it till you try it and I said let's do this but things have to be very crystal clear boundaries need to be stated like things need to be spoken about and we embarked on the long distance journey which was whew, a ride I was actually pleasantly surprised with how well I handled long distance. Keep in mind, we did see each other and we did kind of have like a general unspoken rule, which I think you should communicate about, um, where we did not want to go longer than a month of seeing each other. So we always had to plan these things. It requires a lot more planning. It requires a lot more dedication, um, you know, really trying to prioritize our priorities and making each other a priority amongst all the other things that was going on in our lives. The biggest obstacle I faced in the long distance relationship was the texting and the calling was never really fulfilling or enough for me. Uh, we managed and we kept up to date with each other every single day. Something that I want to highlight here is constant, concise communication. There is no one day where you don't text each other. It's every day. You do what you can. You let them know when you're going to be unavailable. You never leave anything in the dark. Nobody should be assuming anything. If you go out and you come home, give me a call or let me know when you get home. Like little things like that had to be instilled in the relationship for it to continue or for it to even survive. We did make trips to see each other. Did that work all the time? No. Did he miss my birthday? Yes. And it was extremely difficult to go through those things. I had a personal um, thing with my family that happened that was very traumatic and difficult and he was unable to be there. And so a lot of things really hurt me, but I knew that I couldn't really get mad at him. It was just the circumstances. As long as there was effort and trying and I saw him pull up whenever he could and I did the same, then I knew things were okay. But again, these are the obstacles that you face with long distance. I believe that in order for long distance to work, it should have an expiry date, a time limit. We are not doing this past this date and we have a plan post this date. So in my relationship at the time, I decided that I was open to moving to his city, okay, his town. And that was in the works and I was figuring that out and all of that stuff. So we actually saw an end in sight and we were working towards that. And that kept us going. If we didn't see an end in sight, I think it would have been extremely difficult and I'm sure you guys can understand why you're doing this aimlessly for what purpose I don't want to just be a virtual girlfriend for you think about when you work towards something you need to know what you're working towards for you to actually want to work towards it you can't just be doing things without having a purpose this is where people have their fucking existential crises this is where people give up on things people get less motivated less disciplined because they don't have a goal so this is both a life lesson and a relationship lesson you both should be talking about you know from time to time what the plan is, where you guys want to go if things align. I know that there are the odd cases of people that meet people online and do long distance without seeing each other. In my opinion, all right, and this is going to hurt some of you guys, and I know that there are exceptions to the rules, so please shut up, okay? If you don't meet each other at the beginning and you instantly go into a long distance relationship, what you're doing is, for lack of a better term, because I can't really think of one that would make sense for this, it is a waste of time. You need to know who this person is face to face. Text messages is very different. The way people text is very different than how they are, their energy, how they deal with things. People only text once they've edited down their sentences, once they've thought about what to say. In person, you don't really have the luxury of doing that. So it's very different. Building that connection, being able to see them in certain predicaments or situations you don't really know even if you ask them 21 questions people are always going to answer based off of what they think the other person wants to hear a lot of the times and so it's super important to be able to have physical time together where you see each other for a while and then if long distance is something that is presented or comes up that you are able to deal with that and you both want the same things and have an end date to look forward to so this is the fundamentals of how I believe long distance relationships could potentially work and there is some sort of beauty in putting all of that work in a long distance relationship to work towards being together because you do experience different 
feelings and emotions and circumstances that you wouldn't normally when you see each other every day. A lot of people actually take for granted the fact that they're able to see each other every day and not have to experience long distance relationships. And I think long distance relationships kind of reminds you of that and allows you to appreciate certain moments a lot more. The only thing with that, I will say, is when you end up spending time together or when you visit each other, it is like a honeymoon stage or phase. So if you haven't been dating each other for a while at the beginning before you do long distance, just keep in mind that the moments when you guys see each other is actually not 100% the reality of how your relationship would be if you were not in long distance. When you see each other, you want full attention from one another. You're not really dealing with anything. You're avoiding the world. You're spending one-on-one -on -one time together. You're having lots of sex, lots of romantic things, lots of like cute and cuddly moments because you missed each other. And every time I had moments with my man doing that and having those weekends, I had to remind myself that this is beautiful. Bask in the moment, be present. But at the same time, you can't expect this to always be what it's going to be after long distance because life isn't easy that it's a roller coaster of a journey and a ride and we have to be able to work through problems together and so part of me always wanted to see him and I deal with hardships besides the long distance hardships that we were dealing with and became pros at because we were doing it for a long time I get a lot of questions on TikTok live and DMs being like should I entertain a long distance relationship my answer is don't entertain a long distance relationship in my opinion if you've not dated them and gotten a great gist of who they are beforehand um, ask yourself if you're prepared to do that understand what the potential obstacles will be and are you guys prepared did you have a thorough conversation and are you willing to continuously have this conversation throughout be transparent about how you feel he will go out she will go out with other people and hang out and you know not sit at home waiting for you and you guys shouldn't are you guys okay doing that not knowing you have to have full trust and how do you have full trust or how do you feel confident in the fact that you trust them it's taking the time to get to know them it's spending time with them. It's going out in public with them and kind of seeing how they are. Um, you know, it's it's how open they are with communicating. They're not just telling you they had a fun night. They're telling you, listen, you know, this girl or guy approached me and like, I just want to let you know about it, whether you want to hear it or not. I just want to let you know this is how I handle the situation. Being transparent like that will go a long way and will help you with long distance relationships. A lot of people just don't feel comfortable having these conversations. And so you live long distance, la di da both just being ignorant and oblivious and stupid. And eventually that shit snowballs and adds up. Okay. And something happens. And then you're like, well, why didn't you tell me about this before? And da, da, da. And then it becomes a big headache. Long distance requires extreme transparency and thoroughness. If you are not good with that, if you don't have that as a skill set, if you are not working towards that, long distance is going to be something that you feel like you're fucking dying in. Okay. Certain expectations need to be stated. I expect that, you know, we have this one rule where I'm not going to go longer than a month and a half without seeing you. We have to be able to do that. Can you do that? Or, you know, for me, two months is fine. Or let's do a back and forth. I come to you, you come to me. How does that look like? How can we make th things work? Can we meet in the middle? Long distance will not be convenient. And you have to go in there being like, I understand and I'm still going to figure out how to make this work. Do you guys have an end in sight or are you both stringing each other along? Be fully transparent and fair to your partner. A lot of people give their partner promises because they're the ones that need to move away to work or go somewhere or whatever. And they're the ones that have to initiate the long distance conversation and possibility. And so they promise them the world and then some, and then they can't actually meet those expectations or those promises. They can't fulfill them. And that is manipulation at its finest. So please be wary of that and understand that that's not fair to your partner if you're the one doing it. And for the person that is receiving all these promises, take it with a grain of salt and allow actions to do all the talking. The reality is long distance could work if it is short term for a specific period of time and then you have a game plan. Nobody should be forced to move somewhere they don't want to for somebody. At the beginning of my relationship with that long distance one, I was really against moving to his town and city. It was just not for me. I don't even like the country I live in and I was planning on moving somewhere warm and he kind of basically said, well, you know, this is my situation. I can't move. So you either move to me or it doesn't work. And that's just the reality of it, you know, and I don't want to push you and force you. I want you to do it if you want to do it. And it took me a time to get there. And then eventually I realized that, you know what, I do want to do it. And I know that there is an end in sight. And then after, you know, his career with this, that we would have the opportunity to do the traveling, the things I wanted to do as a couple. Um, and so we kind of made those promises to each other and kept each other 
as truthful as possible with those circumstances, situations, and conversations. If you are doing long distance right now, I am sending you my love. And, you know, if you do believe that it's worth it, you have an end date in mind, you need to get creative with how you uphold that relationship. You need to have virtual dates, FaceTime dates, as tacky and annoying as they are, they need to be done. This relationship should be treated no differently than an actual relationship if you were in the same town as one another. And that means scheduling time to have meaningful phone calls without distractions. That means scheduling time to see each other, scheduling time to do FaceTime dates if you can't see each other. There needs to be creativity and perseverance and lots of effort to sustain this relationship, especially if you want it to go somewhere serious. Otherwise, just get on one of those fucking Omegle chat, whatever, make a friend there and call it a fucking day if you want something virtual. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you appreciated my honesty and a little bit of my story with long distance and how I manage that and what the deal is and what I believe works and what doesn't, what needs to be there before. I think it's essentially a structure that will help make it as successful as possible. Again, there are exceptions to the rules. Things work out differently for everybody, but always be mindful of where you're at and where you stand. Communicate that with your partner and ask yourself if this is something that you can do, want to do. If you are overly compromising things that are actually your boundaries or are non-negotiable for you, be careful and don't get lost in the idea of what this could be. Look at the facts, look at what they've shown you, and then proceed with caution. Don't forget to rate this podcast five large and in charge stars. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell for the notifications. I have a lot of videos and a lot of episodes coming out. And they are topics that you guys have been asking me to speak on they're heavy they're hot they're spicy some are extremely sexual and some just require a lot of yelling from me to you thank you guys for being here i appreciate you spending your time with me and i will see you back here very soon